A Saudi delegation has been to the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, for talks with Houthi rebels over a potential end to Yemen's long-running civil war. Saudi Arabia has supported Yemen's government against the Iran-backed Houthi rebels who control much of northern Yemen, including the capital. Now, the fighting has pushed the country to the brink of famine. A country in ruins, with tens of thousands dead and millions displaced. This is Yemen after nine years of civil war. Now though, for the first time in many months, signs of real progress, enemies shaking hands, as the leader of the Houthi rebels welcomes delegations from Saudi Arabia and Oman. The UN calls the talks the closest Yemen has come to lasting peace. And the Yemeni people want to believe it. We hope for the best, and we hope that these negotiations will be serious. We hope that they come up with a solution that satisfies the Yemeni people. We are tired of this situation and of promises and procrastination. From year to year, they promise people a solution. We only want to be brothers united with our neighbours, so that they have their interests and we have ours, and we live in peace. We don't want war. War destroys nations. The war that destroyed Yemen began in 2014, when the Houthi rebels seized the capital Sana'a and much of the country's north. Saudi Arabia intervened, leading an international military coalition against the Houthis. Since then, the conflict has turned into a proxy war, with Saudi Arabia on one side and Iran, the main supporter of the Houthis, on the other. And caught in the crossfire is a population on the brink of famine, forced to live in camps, longing for peace and a better life. Well, let's talk uh, a bit more about Yemen now. Hisham al omaisi is a conflict analyst and senior Yemen advisor at the European Institute of Peace, and he joins me from Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. So there are many hopes, we'll say, attached to the peace talks. Can they bring an end to the almost decade-long war? Well, it's a, definitely a step forward, but the thing is that people are being overly ambitious and thinking just a handshake or inking a document in Sana'a would bring it into the conflict. The conflict in Yemen is multi-layered. There's decades of animosity there, and uh, it's going to take more uh, of reconstruction plans, um, uh, pathways to reconciliation, economic recovery, bringing in all the other factions inside the country around the table. So it's it, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit about managing expectations. It's a step forward, yes, but we're we have a long way to go. Right now, Saudi Arabia and Iran have recently agreed to re-establish diplomatic ties. Now, if both of them ended their military interventions in Yemen, what would that mean uh, for the war and for peace? Well, it definitely is going to help with the de-escalation efforts in Yemen. The normalization between the Saudis and the Iranians. Well, first of first off. There's decades of animosity between the Saudis and the Iranians. So that has to be sorted out over the coming few years. It's not just because the Saudis and the Iranians shook hands in China. It's going to bring that to an end. But it also definitely reflects on the situation in Yemen. This is one of the things why we see now the Houthis being more amenable towards Saudi Arabia and accepting the Saudi ambassador in Salah. They're willing to shake hands. It's a good step forward again. But again, we need some time to gauge progress, to gauge the extent to, will, uh, to, to which will, they'll be, uh, they would want to play ball. Now, you've mentioned there that there have been, uh, let's say, steps forward, but it, but it isn't enough for uh, lasting peace or for peace. In your opinion, what needs to be done then in order for that peace to be possible going forward, considering what you've been mentioning before? Well, to begin with, there's multiple factions inside the country. Currently, the current talks are bilateral between the Saudis and the Houthis alone. You have, for instance, the Southern Transitional Council. Uh, they, wanna, they want to secede with half the country. They're not part of these uh, agreements and talks. You have the national resistance on the Western coast. They're not part of these talks. You have other tribes in the middle and on the east of the country. Again, they're not part of these talks. For uh, a sustainable agreement, the, there needs to be a holistic 
comprehensive approach that actually addresses the multiple roots of the current conflict. You're talking about people that have been devastated throughout the war of, for the past eight years. We're still not discussing reconstruction plans. We're not, we're not discussing recovery plans. We're not talking about projects that will help us get off the ground in Yemen. Without all of that, without trust building measures as well, we're, 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 we're overselling the current peace talks. Now, on the ground in Yemen, we saw it in our report there, you've touched on it a little bit, the Yemeni people at the end of the day are the ones who've been suffering through uh, this war for many years now. How is their voice being heard in this entire process? Unfortunately, uh, traditionally, uh, Yemeni voices have been marginalized. It, it, it has been a top uh, bottom uh, kind of approach and kind of process. It's the elites that are taking charge while basically pushing Yemenis the masses, the general masses, to the side. Uh, this is one of the things, for instance, where we've insisted that we need a more inclusive process. You need to talk to the people in the various districts in the various parts of the country. Sana'a, where the current talks are being held, does not represent the rest of the country. We have 21 governorates with 333 districts, each with its own unique problems. So without inclusivity, without a bottom-up approach in Yemen, any peace process is not going to stick for long. It's not going to be sustainable. Hisham al omaisi with the European Institute of Peace, thank you very much for joining us on DW and giving us your insights. And we are joined now by Leo Vigor, editor of Zenith magazine, which focuses on the Arab and Islamic world. He was recently in Yemen and reported from there. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. Uh, there have been other attempts to establish an agreement. What is different this time around? Well, I think uh, we have to look at it, yes, that, um, I mean, Saudi Arabia wants to get out of this war. Saudi Arabia wants to get out of Yemen. Uh, since quite uh, some time, we have seen uh, yeah, we have previous attempts by Saudi Arabia to uh, find a way out of uh, the war by reaching an agreement directly with the Houthis. But I think this time, the difference is, of course, the uh, Iran-Saudi Arabian reproachment that we are seeing. Uh, which changes uh, the incentives for the Houthis, who are, you know, like, uh, yeah, um, working together with or have been massively supported by by Iran uh, over the last years to actually find an agreement with Saudi Arabia. How do you assess the chances for a breakthrough this time around? Well, I think, um, well, I'm... I'm cautiously optimistic that a deal can be reached between Saudi Arabia and the Houthis. But I think we have to do some expectation management here. Um, this is not going to end the war in Yemen. It's going to end the Saudi involvement in the war in Yemen. Um, but it will not change the local dynamics that are at stake in, in Yemen between uh, different factions. I mean, the south of Yemen is uh, controlled by the officially recognized government of Yemen, which then again uh, consists of various different factions, uh, who are also not getting along very well, um, and they will have to find an agreement with the Houthis themselves. So in the end, what will end the war in Yemen is not a Saudi-Houthi uh, Saudi uh, deal, uh, but we need intra-Yemeni talks uh, to end. Uh, this uh, conflict afterwards. And the problem here is that uh, the uh, Saudi Houthi talks will probably sh like tilt the level uh, playing field uh, towards the Houthis. So it will give them a comparative advantage and leave out uh, the yeah, um, Saudi um, supported forces um, on, on the ground in, in uh, southern Yemen. From the you officially recognized government of Yemen. You recently um, got back from Yemen. I'd just like to ask for your impressions because uh, we've all seen the reports of just how dire the humanitarian situation is there. Well, um, I've only been to, to Aden, which is uh, the de facto capital at the moment, uh, the seat of the official government. Uh, so I think the humanitarian situation in Aden is uh, comparatively much better than in the rest of the country. But uh, the problem is, um, I mean, the situation even in, in Aden is rather devastating, visiting hospitals uh, there where there's no access to even basic medication um, and uh, so on. So the humanitarian situation in Yemen is uh, rather dire, and uh, even in Aden, so, yes. Leo Vigor, editor at Zenith so, Magazine, thank you so much for joining us.